Hello everyone, welcome to another video by Legacy IS. Here we're going to talk about something that often disturbs us. This is especially true with people who have been appearing for the UPSC examination for at least once, if not more. And when you are not able to clear one of the most important stages of the UPSC examination, it is often very, very depressing. So here at Legacy IS, we attempt to look at the problem statement, attempt to see where are the gaps and let's see how best we can improve our scores and how we cannot repeat the mistakes because of which we are not clearing our mains examination. So in this video, let us look into why do people fail in the mains examination. All right. We begin by understanding that as far as what is the requirement of mains. Okay. What are you expected to do? Firstly, it's very important that when you have the syllabus of the mains paper, there are every, uh, every paper of the entire main syllabus basically has a lot of terms and has a lot of terminologies. It's always essential, it's always good to kind of have very good clarity on each of those terms and terminologies. All right. If you are reading any of the uh, subjects and any of the chapters, if you come across important words and terminologies, try to know their meanings, try to understand the context, try to have clarity and be ready with definitions so that you are able to write and produce the right words in the most least number of words possible. The second is one needs to always substantiate their argument with a lot of examples and the best way of doing it to be relevant, to be able to connect it is always good to use the examples which you get in your news and also make notes out of it. So once you make the notes out of current affairs and put the examples, you will be able to see and use those examples in your final examination. It will just show the examiner that how basically you can connect. It will show that how basically you are able to connect the static with the current which is an extremely important requirement for the UPSC examination and the examination in general. So it will really uh, help you to kind of connect the static with the current. It is very important that there is a logical flow, there is a structure, there is a, you know, just a way through which your answer is progressing as far as your mains is concerned. Try to keep it in track, try to keep it proper, try to keep it uh, in a way that one really falls and supports the succeeding uh, argument. All right. So when we have that structure and flow maintained, we basically are trying to engage the examiner for a longer period of time, for the entire duration of the answer. In an answer, it's always important to write multiple perspectives. All right. So when you are, let's say, talking about an issue that is social in nature, try to add an economic angle to it. Try to add the laws and constitutional provisions which are already there. Are there any environmental concerns in it? So the more number of perspectives you add, the more holistic your answer gets towards the end. And finally, it's always important to write both the pros as well as the cons of any particular, let's say, policy, program, decision, statement, okay? And try to have a very constructive conclusion. So this positive and constructive conclusion is really going to give a good impression towards the end of the examination, at the end of the answer, just before the examiner is about to mark you for that particular answer. So that the person knows that this person has, uh, that the student, the aspirant has gone through both the sides of the argument, has incorporated as many number of dimensions and as many number of perspectives and then come up with a constructive conclusion. So when that happens, the right approach is being reflected in your answer and it really kind of gives a good impression in the mind of the examiner. What is also very important for us at this stage is to understand that why don't we get there and clear the mains and then reach the interview stage. The first is that there is a lack of conceptual clarity. 
in mains paper the idea is to read less number of resources but more number of revisions to get that conceptual clarity hence it is always advisable to go through your basics to go through your ncrts so that you get these gaps cleared a lot of times the higher standard books will come across lot of terminologies but you will not be able to give the exact definition of those terms and terminologies all right so it's always good to go back to the basics get your concepts clear develop or clear or or fill the gap that is there in your level of understanding which will really go a long way in writing your main answers often people look at the question and start writing let's say if there's a question on reasons okay state the reasons for this particular event now besides reasons you also have to give a background you also have to give the effects if it is a question on discussion okay or if it is asking you what are the benefits of this scheme make sure you also writes the challenges or the shortcomings it will always be an incomplete answer if you don't write both sides of the coin so always try to have multiple perspectives often people tend to write a lot of extra information as it is the word limit uh, word uh, limit is specified and in spite of that if there is too much of extra unwanted information or sudden deviation especially at the level of essays where you are not sticking to the topic then it becomes a problem for the examiner and that examiner doesn't want to give you as much marks as he would have thought because you're not sticking to the topic you're not sticking to the question in uh, that is being asked to you right in the same way if your answer is equally disconnected from the question from the topic from the perspective then that really creates a bad impression in the mind of the examiner so it's very important that if the question is crisp and clear you also write a similar answer that they are expecting out of you we cannot make the mistake of exceeding the word limit all right it is a basic instruction that is being given to you so always try to stick to the word limit and always try to give best that is why vocabulary and use of correct words is very very important if you have to use the word accountable then you use the word accountable rather than using a couple of words to explain the same thing so that's why it's always said that try to get your keywords right okay and this is where it comes to our main uh, ways to improve the answer if there are some important words that have to be used let's say in the case of ethics okay if there are words like transparency accountability sustainability all right e governance all right so then it is very important that you use those specific words and underline those words used draw attention that you have covered all the major points use a lot of bullets also okay instead of really long sentences so when you use the appropriate keywords it just shows the examiner that this person has clarity this person is well read this person knows what he is talking about all right like i was telling you that it's always good to go through the syllabus of the mains paper and for all the major words that are there just prepare a very very short one two liner definition of that particular term if there's a term of regionalism if there's a term communalism just know what exactly these words mean we are able to explain it when we try talking about it but if you were to just write in the most minimal words possible what is that definition or what how would you define regionalism or globalization etc all right as i was telling you that these important keywords have to be highlighted instead of using multiple colors instead of you know changing pens a simple way of going ahead is underlining them drawing attention trying to uh, not just terms in fact you could draw attention to some events also all right some phrases also all right like think globally act locally or uh, events like some of the important causes and effects can have an important event which led to uh, the entire event in which the question is being asked 
So if there are important events, phrases, not only do you put them in separate bullets, but also if you underline them, it really would draw attention of the examiner to those things and will help you fetch much better marks. It is very important as I've been telling you that focus, revise multiple times. Okay, when you revise multiple times, then basically you are able to achieve this conceptual clarity. A lot also helps by appearing for the mock tests. The mock tests, the mock examinations really help you to prepare yourself in the very best way to, uh, you know, kind of see and check that really if all the things that you've read are ingrained, consolidated and clear in your head. So multiple revisions help in developing or strengthening this conceptual clarity. But this conceptual clarity can also come through mock tests, through peer discussion, all right, through group study. A lot of times those also help. And revision is basically something that for which making notes is very, very important how we basically make notes of uh, the topic so that in the least number of time we are able to cover maximum portion subjects and topics so for you to do good revision it's important that you make good notes all right so this is the way through which you basically approach your mains try to look at the areas in which generally we tend to make a lot of mistakes but at the same time, look at the ways through which you can really enhance your answer and then through repeated attempts of mock tests and also revisions, I really hope that you'll be able to ace the mains exam in the next year. So I wish you all the best in this journey. Keep watching Legacy IS for more such informative videos.